from the depth instant tutorial. Today we're going to build machine guns or autocannons or whatever you call the, those fast firing hovitzers of yours. We're going to make a 5x5 turret and this is the shape you need to have in order to have a 5x5 turret that can spin around inside itself. Some of the most basic tips on how to make turrets or APS turrets in general may not be covered as we already covered it in an earlier APS tutorial. Please check that if you are missing some steps. The patterns to make larger turrets are, as you already know, here in sub objects. And why we don't cover everything is to make it a little bit more efficient. So let's start building the turret. To control the turret, we will use a local weapon controller. But because we have an, the all in one local weapon controller option now, we will add this instead. This one already contains a failsafe and a receiver, so we don't need to waste space, which is very precious on very small turrets like this one. Next up, we're going to decide how high our turret will be. We already decided it will be a 5x5 size turret, and I have outlined the internal armor of the turret here. We are using these, um, these uh, heavy armor slopes here, because that allows for more connection points, so even though one of these get destroyed, the entire side of the armor won't fall off. Smart thinking. Now I added these uh, pieces of wood here as a kind of measuring stick. And this measuring stick will tell us how high we can build the turret. The turret will be 8 meters high and the part of the turret that sticks out over this limit will be above the deck. So anyways, let us start building on the turret. And by pressing backspace, you can decide where you, you know, want to have the firing piece and stuff like that and place blocks in the air momentarily. So we will go to advanced cannon and we will select the firing piece. Now, if we want a higher fire rate, we can do, a, it's not a sheet, but almost, we can have several firing pieces and that allows us for, um, well, more fire rate because we have more fire rate possible because we have more firing pieces. So here we have a little firing piece here and there and I'm gonna have two of them to max my opportunities. Then we're gonna have an AA mantle and just line it up like that. And there we go, fantastic. To the back of the turret, we will of course connect up gauge increasers and coolers. Now there are a lot of different types of coolers here and it's smart to just go with a 5-way connector uh, most of the time. It might not look as cool, but um, it just works. And we can build our cooling all over the place if we like to, but do remember that uh, these two pieces cannot connect, because if they do, uh, the firing pieces will get very confused when you reload the turret or take it in and out of play. So uh, blocks that can connect must be separated, uh, otherwise you will get into trouble when you are working with multiple firing pieces. Uh, it's a little bit dangerous, but uh, the outloader we are going to use is the belt-fed outloader. You will notice that a belt-fed outloader is much more expensive, but it's also the only choice we can have if we want to have really fast-firing guns. They have one slot, uh, one side, which can connect to ammo, and they can only connect to ammo um, on this particular side. And it needs clips in order to even function, just so you know. And we can add as many as we want like that and they kind of connect to each other like that. We need to make sure that these are protected from damage because if they get damaged, the entire thing will blow up. Another thing you can attach is ammo ejectors and this will eject the shells when they get damaged. Yeah, so this is only if you use normal outloaders, but if you use belt-fed outloaders, um, you'll have to just protect them to not blow up. So let's do that and add some ammo clips, which we will need to protect later. Beautiful ammo clips for both our firing pieces. What we need now is a ammo input feeder. Now ammo inputs, um, usually you only need one per unit, but uh, the belt fed outloader cannot fire at all when uh, it's you know loading. So when <clears throat> this belt is uh, empty, 
it will fill it up again and then fire again. So that is why it might be a smart idea to only have one ammo clip, because otherwise the time between reload might be longer. Another thing we will add is add more of these ammo intakes, because if we have more ammo intakes, the loading times uh, will be shorter. I think it might be enough with that many, but perhaps we are going to add one layer more just because the sake of it. All right there. So uh, when these explode, they're going to blow up hard um, if we get damaged that much. So a good way to prepare and we have already done that is to have several of these uh, firing pieces. And we can divide these two sections by a beautiful layer of advanced armor or heavy armor, I mean, and that will stop the explosion from blowing up the other side as well. We're going to add a nice little ammo controller. So we go to advanced cannon and go to ammo controllers. And we can just uh, plop down this little unit here. And then we go and select the four customizer module thing right there. Now, of course, we could have really long shells, but the thing with the fast firing guns is that the smaller the shell, the faster the fire rate can be. So uh, the belt fed outloaders can load and fire small shells more quickly. So I recommend you to only keep to have, you know, four uh, modules here if you want to have a really fast firing rate. So uh, we can set up something that we like and uh, I think for this thing we're just going to go maybe maybe we, we, we go with an armor piercing head and then we will go solid warhead body indeed and then we have two of these uh, gunpowder casing. Now we will go and set up the ammo controller and link up all uh, unassigned intakes to this ammo controller. And we'll go to this one and we need to do the same for each firing piece. Fantastic. And now they are connected up. So we are going to just add some barrels there. And we can see that the heavy barrels are uh, quite powerful, but uh, the normal barrels are not that weak either actually and since the heavy barrels make him slower We're going to go with a normal barrels like this one and on top of that We're going to place this bore evacuator This thing will add a slight cooling bonus, but it's well worth it and you don't need to place it closest to the mantlet anymore So it's uh, worth having one for uh, some extra cooling there uh, so our internal pieces here are basically set up and we can now add some protection and Since we are using heavy armor uh, on the base here We're going to continue using heavy armor to just cover uh, the front damage taking part So basically we are expecting to take most of the damage we will get from the front and here we are also adding heavy armor to cover that area. Before we cover this entire thing up in armor, we have to solve the biggest issue with turrets like this one, like fast firing machine gun out to cannon or chain gun hovitzer cannons. Well, in any case, that is to make the cooling limit match the outer loader limit. The outer loaders are quite expensive, so if we can't match the cooler to the outloaders, we'll have to remove some outloaders because otherwise we're just wasting a lot of materials. And the simplest way to make it cool faster is of course to add more coolers that we can fit inside of here. So now we can see that the rate of fire is still limited by the cooling and that is, well, you can see 218 RPM. And here we can see the barrel. One smart trick to up the firing rate is of course to either increase or decrease the gauge, we can do that. If we do it like that we can see now the firing rate is like 700, but uh, that's not a nice way to do it, no. Um, what we can do is to add more barrels. If we have six barrels like this one, we can change the spacing, uh, then we can get a cooling bonus, indeed. Multi-barrel, you can see down in the text on the info slab here. Multi-barrel barrel 2x cooling time multiplier. This is quite fantastic. 
So basically adding gauge increasers until you reach the desired gauge and balancing that out with coolers when you have your multi-barrel solution gives you a nice cooling limit and we can see we have reached a kind of equilibrium where we have an outloader limit of 470 and a cooling limit of a little higher uh, 498. Having more barrels makes your cannon less accurate. So if you have more cooling, then you can indeed go in here and decrease the amount of barrels you have here. And then you can see that we have a much lower firing rate. And that is because our gauge went up to 63, a lot higher. The gauge is uh, scaling with how many barrels you have. So we need to balance that out. And if you change that, you might need to remove a gauge increaser uh, and add more coolers or something like that. It's a weird little game where you have to uh, balance stuff around a lot. But now we can see that the cooling limit is still higher. So theoretically I could go down to four barrels like this. And now you can see that the cooling is indeed um, lower. Now the gauge is uh, 72. So that is a bit higher than it was before. We can by the way go in here and set it to the previous gauge if we want to. We can do that. Now we set it to something else, but you get my drift. And then we can see the cooling and outer loader balance for this particular gauge. Uh, and then we could uh, potentially like remove that one. So if we remove it, you can see that uh, the gauge is still as we set it. We don't need two gauge increases to reach this gauge. So that's kind of the little game that is balancing this out and uh, play around until you reach your equilibrium you want. But remember, the more barrels you have, the more inaccurate it will be. Well, I decided that five barrels is uh, my kind of equilibrium and uh, will have a little higher gauge with uh, 63 millimeters. Now I removed some armor to uh, finish this balancing act and uh, now I can re-add it again, of course. So uh, remember that uh, we have some explodey bits here, like the outloaders down there, they're quite dangerous, as well as the ammo clips. Also never wrong to hide some surge protectors in uh, metal hulls, even if it's on turrets. And then we can just cover this thing up a little bit. And there we go, adding a mandatory mimic to pretend I'm a professional builder. Fantastic, looking good. And something like that. Our turret is basically done. And uh, now can probably be a smart idea to uh, test this thing out since we haven't done that already. And uh, before we test it out we just need to look at it and see that our values indeed line up and our ammo intake limit is much higher. And that is of course because um, we want it to load faster. If you want it to remain accurate when firing, um, you probably need to add a lot of recoil absorbers. Now we have very limited space in this turret, so I didn't opt for accuracy. But if you want an accurate fast firing turret, go with only one barrel and have a lot of recoil absorbers, so you can kind of match that out. But anyways, stuff is looking good, so let's test this thing. And you can hear our fire rate sounds a little bit stuttery. You can see the rate of fire is 350. And what we can do to make it sound smoother is to go in here and limit the fire rate to like 350. So just below the fire rate we can deliver. And if we do this for both guns, when we go back here, we can just pop in here and there we go. It sounds much more normal. Now it's also a smart time to save the turret you are building in the sub-objects mode. And there we go, beautiful turret in action. Now our turret is doing a quite decent job at taking out some enemies, but it's likely that we need to adapt the type of shell we use to the enemy we want to face. So do keep that in mind and, uh, well, the shell we have is decent, but sure, we could use some other shell for this type of enemy, like Hollow Point, for example. In any case, I hope this tutorial have helped you, and if it did, do subscribe, because we are making more instant tutorials. This is your host, Jim Reesen, and we're signing out.